All right, I think that we are live, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking anyway. So you guys, welcome. I am your host, Danielle Pierce, coming to you live on Your Black World. Normally, you can find me on flytobequeen.com, the network for melanated women like you, every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Today, we have such a great topic. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot wait to get into it. So today, we're going to be talking about this idea of whether or not we should charge um we should charge children rent. And I'm just curious to get you guys' feedback right off the bat. Like, do you think that that's a good idea or not? Still don't know if I'm um, not. We should charge yeah. children. Should we charge rent. our children rent? That and is the question for to get you guys today. Right Hold on, let me bat. mute like, this. All right, should we charge our children rent is the question of the day. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Miss Elaine Harris. And we're going to be talking about this concept of, you know, whether or not you should be, should you, should, should these kids be paying money when they are living in their parents' house? So with that being stated, Elaine, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and a little bit about your background? Well, um, like you said, I am Elaine Harris. I am a... Uh, I am a recipient of someone who lived at home until the age of 32 years old. So, <laughs> and no, I did not go away to college. I commuted back and forth from my parents' house. So I stayed there until I was a whole 32 years old and they let me stay there rent free. Wow. Now tell me the backstory behind that. Cause you said that your dad told you something specifically. He said, you know, I don't have, um, I don't have, uh, property to leave you. I don't got money to leave you. I don't have none of the other shit that rich people leave their children. But what I can do for you is what? What did he say? Well, he said that as long as I wasn't populating his house, which meant, you know, as long as I'm not bringing any baby home, babies home, as long as I'm not, you know, like partying and being all in the club and, you know, dropping it low, <laughs> you can stay here as long as you want to get yourself together he said that's my uh duty as a father to you for you know not being in a position financially to just you know give you 50 grand for uh, to start a business or you know put down forty thousand dollars on your first place or anything like that that i've seen you know some of my other uh, friends parents doing so he just was like you know i can I can let you live here rent free. That's that's my duty as a father to you. You said something that struck out to me. You said duty as a father. So a lot of us, especially in our community, and you know how our community gets down, when we sure. talk about duties to our children, a lot of us um, are like hell bent on the idea that doing our duty as parents means charging our kids rent, means teaching them responsibility, means teaching them how to pay bills, means, you know, every time you start getting paid, you got to put into this household. What do you What do you think about that? I think it's good stuff. I mean, <laughs> I think it's wrong. And I feel like the last thing a 16-year-old wants, especially if it's their first job, is for their parents to be taking their money every pay period. Um, to me, I think it robs your child of the feeling of, you know, having their own money. And if you've raised your child right, then they're not going to be squandering their money on frivolous things. And of course, they probably learned a lot by watching you. So if you don't trust your child to stock away money or to build their credit or do things like that, then it's a learned behavior. So what did you teach your children about finance? Ooh, so if I understand you correctly, you saying if your child blows money, doesn't save money, has bad credit, doesn't care about credit or even know about their credit score. You're saying they learned that from their mama and their daddy and their environment. And so we shouldn't be blaming them for that. We should be looking at ourselves and be like, okay, why didn't I teach my child X, Y, and Z? Exactly. And another thing I also said that may kind of strike a nerve, but I'm like, if, if you are an adult and you are dependent on your 16 year old to financially contribute to the household, then that means that what what responsibilities are you really teaching them about money if you're strapped for cash? Yeah, I, I can kind of see why that would strike a nerve with like <laughs> a, a, few, a few million black folks around <laughs> around the country and, and myself included. But the thing about me is I'm okay with nerves being struck because I know that that means that um you know, this is a learning experience. For you guys who are just tuning exactly. in, I'm host, Danielle Pierce. I'm here talking with my friend Elaine. We're talking about the idea of whether or not 
parents should charge your children rent. So you guys let me know in the comments, do you think that we should charge your children rent across the board? Do you think under certain circumstances or do you think we should never charge them rent? Um, do us a favor, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button on the video if you haven't already. We definitely appreciate you. It's free to you, helps us tremendously. For some of y'all who are stubborn and refuse to hit the thumbs up button ever, please go ahead and do so today. We definitely appreciate you. And again, I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Normally I'm talking about business, real estate, entrepreneurship, tax lien properties, et cetera. But this is all kind of related because what I found is this. If we don't, if the foundation isn't right, then all the other shit that I'll be talking about doesn't happen. So I know too many people my age, I'm 39, um, or people who are even older who, because they didn't have that foundation, they literally are stuck and they can't do anything else. They can't do what they want to do. And they don't even know how to do what they want to do. Does that make sense? So we're talking today to Elaine, who stayed with her parents until she was 32 years old. Now, Elaine, are you an only child? I am the youngest of five, Miss Danielle. And guess okay, okay, so tell me about the other ones. Were they at home with, with y'all too? This is where it gets interesting. <laughs> my dad gave all five of me and my siblings this opportunity to stay at home rent free. I'm okay. the only person who took him up on it. Really? I'm the only person who took him up on it. And of course, one of the struggle things about this is I'm like 23, 24, I'm dating, and I have a curfew. So I, I think it's a mindset thing because a lot of people, they're rushing out of the house at 18, 22 you know, years old because they want to hurry up and be grown and they want their own privacy. Yes. And they want to lay up. So... I, I didn't like the fact that I was like, well, I got the rest of my life to lay up with a man and <laughs> make it, drinking wine. So I don't need to do that while I don't have a credit score. I don't have a savings. I haven't, you know, graduated college yet. I don't need to do that yet. It's so funny that you say that layup phrase, because I promise you, whenever this subject comes up, that's like the first thing people default to. Well, I don't want to be having sex in front of my mama. I don't want to be screwing. Like that, is that the only thing that you think being yeah. an adult translates to is being able to have sex when and wherever you want, however you want, and whose house it's like, is that the only thing that you think about? It, it, that blows me like, so it does. I can't even put it into words. Like what about building your credit, getting your credit, or even understanding credit? getting your credit score up to where, you know, you don't, you're not 35, 40, 45 years old. Like, oh, I never knew the importance of credit. Well, you should by now, right? right. What about saving money? What about investing in the stock market? What about, what about learning who the hell you are? What about doing, taking time to do all of that versus just, you know, yeah, what? I, know I, just wanna, I, <laughs> I just want to lay up and do what I want to do and be grown. And another thing, just piggybacking off of that, a lot of the, um, especially the younger crowd, they have this phrase, they were like, oh, you only live once, you might as well do X, Y, and Z. But my question to you guys, and you guys let me know if you're watching too, at what point does you only live once translate into doing dumb shit all day, every day? At what point does you only live once translate to, oh, I'm gonna be high, I'm gonna, you know, drink every day, I'm gonna mess with all these different boys. These different, like, what, how did we get to this point is what I'm trying to understand. Can somebody let me know in the comments today? How do we get to this point? So Elaine, how, tell me, and let me know if this is a, it's too sensitive of a question. But let me know, compared to your siblings, um, the ones who decided they were not going to stay at home, they were like, I'm getting the fuck up out of here. I'm tired. I'm tired of being at home. How, in terms of credit, I'm not going to say how do you compare, but in terms of lifestyle and their understanding of credit and how they fared so far, what would you say about that? Well, what I have to say is, again, I'm the youngest of five, and... I would say the biggest age gap is between me and my older sister, which is nine years. Then um, there's a five-year age gap, there's a seven-year age gap, and then there's an 18-month age gap. So I'm the youngest of everybody, so they hit a head start. I'm the first one to graduate college. I'm the first one to work in my degree field. I was the first one to purchase a property. And the first one to start a business. So let me ask you this. In, in, in the typical, stereotypical Black household, all of what you said would basically translate to me as um, you don't get along with the rest of your family and they think you think you better than everybody else. So is that what they think? Do they think, do they think that you think you better than everybody else? And if so, why? 
<laughs> my, my oldest two siblings definitely feel that way. And I will say, Danielle, I was at a bit of an advantage, not just because of my father um, letting me stay there, but because of birth order. I feel like being the youngest puts you at a huge advantage because you get to watch everybody else fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> And I think parents get tired too. Like by the time after the third child, or after you know, you know what? Just you know, potty train yourself. I, I, I'm not even gonna stress about. You just literally stop stressing about everything because you just don't have the time. You don't have the bandwidth. So you saying that basically you watch everybody else mess up, and you was like, you know what? I'm not gonna yeah. do that. And you know what, Daniel? I think one of the biggest things is I watched my oldest sister. She had four kids by the time she was 21 years old. Girl, stop. Yes, she had four kids by the time she turned 21, and I seen how hard that made her life. And then my brother, he was just one of the ones that kind of just wanted to get out and be grown. And then my oldest, my uh, second oldest sister, she got married early and started having kids. And so, um, you know, of course, each time she would uh, have another child, then that would set her back from... um, you know, finishing school yes. because she had to take off work and then stay home and you know, be a stay-at-home mom and, and you know, be a wife and a mother. All right, so let me revisit I that point. Um, huh? I'm going to re- I'm gonna revisit that point about the um, having kids in just a second. You guys, if you're just tuning in, I'm your host, Danielle Pierce, coming to you live on Your Black World. Normally, I'm on flynewbeingqueen.com every Tuesday and Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You guys hit the thumbs up button. We definitely appreciate you. It's free, so please do it. You can find us on iTunes now, the Fly New Being Queen, Sisters and Brothers, where you can listen to us on the go on iTunes. And of course, text Queens to 31996 to be notified when we go live. Uh, on the platform, both on here and on the Facebook page. And what else? We're looking for new panelists. So if you're interested, send an email to producer at flynubianmedia.com, producer at flynubianmedia.com, and uh, just explain that you're interested in being on the panel. And lastly, what do you think about this topic? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that, yes, parents should charge your children rent, it teaches them responsibility, or B, that you know you should not charge your children rent? Elaine, let me let me pick up another one of your topics that you blew you blew up your Facebook page when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that, and I quote, um, having kids makes you broke and and reduces the quality of your life. I think that's what you said if I if I understand you correctly. Did I get that quote right? And if, if not, let me know what you what what what, it, what are your thoughts on that? It sounds like um it sounds like almost verbatim what I said. <laughs> I, I think what I actually said, because this is something else my dad told me. He said, each kid you have sets your life back by five years. That's what he said. Five of y'all. Yeah, it was five of us. Five of us. I, I, I have four siblings too. Yeah. Okay. So, so your dad told you that. Yeah, and how old were you when he told you that? Oh, I, I don't even think I had made it to high school yet. I mean, and what did you think? Hmm? What did you think when he said that? I didn't understand it until I got older and started seeing my siblings and other people having kids. And, you know, if, especially if you're a young person who has kids, you're going to be on public aid. And then, you know, I worked in the pharmacy for five years and I seen a lot of people, young with kids that were on public aid. And they, you know, they had their medical cards. They paid their $1 co-pays. They were getting six cans of WIC. And I'm like, I've seen it a lot. So I'm, it made me feel like kids, do, they do set you back financially if you do not plan for them before they get here. If you do not financially plan for them before they get here. Tell me about the feedback you got on that post. Because I, if I remember correctly. I got dragged. <laughs> You, you got dragged up in these internet streets. Huh? <laughs> and I think the, a, a lot of people, they came away with the idea. They were like, well, everything isn't about money and I would never get rid of my children. And listen to what you said. You didn't actually say that everything was about money or that anybody should get rid of their children. I didn't hear that. What I heard was if you have children, they're going to set you back financially, which is true. Let me be very, very clear for anybody who's watching. I have three children. And I look at my life now without three children, if I didn't have any, and I look at my life as it is. And absolutely, they cost money. It's not a day that goes by 
You understand me? Where I don't have to buy some shit for them. It might be $5, it might be $500, but rest assured, they cost money. Summer school is about to be out. They get out oh, yeah. this, and they're going to summer camp because I can't, they can't be at home all day with me. Like I can't, I can't get anything done. And so the summer camp, I moved to relocated from Chicago to Texas. And fortunately, it's only 270 for nine weeks per child. So not a huge amount of money because as you know, 270, you could you could pay 270 every week or every two weeks in some places. So 270 for nine weeks. Well, I want them to do aftercare. So that's another 175. So we'll just say 450 per child for nine weeks. So I got to pay about $1,300 in the next couple of weeks or so. So though, then that's just one expense. So there's always something to spend money on. So anybody who's watching, I'm curious to see how people get so offended when you find, when, when, I, when people like me say kids cost money and they set you back financially as if that's not mm -hmm. the truth. <laughs> Danielle, I, I, got, I have a quick story to tell. I, I watched my niece over the weekend. Yes. From Friday to Sunday. And I had to feed her like five times. It was expensive. <laughs> like this is some bullshit. <laughs> like, I'm not ready for this. Like I cannot be a custodial parent. Like <laughs> and so I was like, oh my god. Yes, they oh, and then no, yeah, so you again. <laughs> yeah, they eat every well. <laughs> I'll say about every 25, 24 minutes, they want some more food. They want a snack. They want, they want, and then they have to be entertained. I, I had this mm. point driven home again. There's, I'm from Chicago and there's a lot of crime, of course, in Chicago. And everybody always says, you know, blame the parents. It's the parents' fault. They're not involved. They don't do X, Y, and Z. And I thought about that. And I said, how true is that actually? Because if I'm not mistaken, a lot of the parents are actually working. And these days people are working two and three jobs. So it's not that the parents don't care. It's not that the parents don't want to do more. It's that they cannot because they're at work. They're at work because if they don't work, then they don't have anywhere to, to live. So it becomes a question of do I not work and just be homeless or do I, you know, try to spend more time with my child so to avoid them having to go out into the streets. I don't think the parents don't care. I think that people are just literally unable to do anything differently because they just don't have the um the village isn't there the jobs don't pay what they need to pay it's just not possible and then like if you want to take kids out and entertain them girl i mean like six flags is up to how much is six flags now in chicago 65 dollars for the day per person um you want to take them to a water park 25 dollars a kid you want to take them to mini golf like all of this stuff costs you could spend a hundred dollars easily trying to take these kids out and of course you got the folks who be like oh just take them to the park they're not gonna play at the park for 12 hours like stop it they're not gonna do that <laughs> yeah we really have to tire them out but i kind of want to back back up to a point you made about um the crime in chicago and it relates to like the parents not being there and everything because I really feel like it's a it's a mentality, and I feel like it's an American mentality. And the reason why I say that is because you know the world traveler, I've been to countries where you know people are poverty. A lot of people like to use poverty as an excuse for violence. But how would you explain um, other countries that are more impoverished than some of these cities here in America? They don't even have running water in their house let alone a bathroom. You can't get any more impoverished than that. And they're not shooting each other or killing each other. They're not even fighting. So it, it's, a, it's a mentality. And, it's, and that mentality goes along with immediate gratification. Our society is obsessed with immediate gratification and stunting on your brothers and sisters. Whereas other uh, societies in other countries, they promote a more what's best for the greater good is best for everybody. Whereas we say, well, just do you. As long as you happy, it don't matter. So that mentality is causing people to shoot other people because they mad or somebody looked at them wrong. Wow. Um, hold on, I messed up the dang on screen. Um, that <laughs> is such an interesting um, perspective. And I'm glad that we're talking today because you've been to how many countries, Elaine? I think it's actually only been like 26. <laughs> okay. Only like 26, 26 countries? countries? Really? Okay. But I've only been to two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been to three. <laughs> um, 
26 countries. So you've seen, so would you say, is it safe to say that American poverty, what we consider to be poor, is basically like living uh, in a palace compared to other parts of the world? Would, is that I, always, I always say nobody in America is poor. Okay. Nobody. So you're saying that, you know, we like to think that violence and poverty go hand in hand, but you've been to places that are far more impoverished have far less resources, don't even have running water or bathrooms, and they not out there killing each other every damn day, fighting, acting a fool. Nope, they're not. Wow. wow. That that is um that is that's it's, not, it's American culture. It's American culture. And then especially like um some of the countries I've been to in Asia, um, you know, a lot of them practice Buddhism. And Buddhism is about being at peace with yourself and with the environment. Now I don't you know religious. <laughs> Wait, say that again. I said I'm not gonna get into any other religion, but I, I, I mean, have seen of uh, I have seen in Asian cultures where Buddhism is big, it, it tends to be more peaceful. Uh you already about to be slammed for even mentioning anything other than Christianity, number one. Because <laughs> that is a no-no. <laughs> It's like, the funny thing about you, Elaine, it's so weird. It's like, people, you offend people, and you never are actually trying to offend people. It's so <laughs> hilarious. It's like, you'd be like, oh, um, you know, I ain't going half on no dates. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I look like I'm dressed to go ha to go to Starbucks or go half on a date? And people are pissed off. You might say, you know what, kids set you back financially, and that's why I never wanted. And people are like, oh, you mad? You bitter? You single? Uh, you know, you want children? You just trying to front for Facebook? You know what I mean? Like, it's like you're not actually trying to offend people, but people are mad offended all the time at everything that you say. I think it's so hilarious. You guys, if you're just tuning in, I'm your host Danielle Pierce, coming to you live on Your Black World. Do us a favor, hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. It helps us tremendously beat this YouTube algorithm. And of course, it's free to you. We're not asking for any donations. We don't need that. Just hit the thumbs up button. Drop your feedback in the comment section. I'm dying to know what you guys think about this. I already know what a lot of Black folks think about this topic, but I'm just curious to know what, what this particular crowd thinks about the topic. And also, while you're there, let me know what city and state you're watching from, what country you're watching from. And um, what type of business you have? Because of course I wouldn't be, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention entrepreneurship. I am a full-time 12 year real estate entrepreneur specializing in tax liens and repairing and maintaining foreclosed properties. Elaine is also a full-time entrepreneur as well, which is how one of the reasons why she's been able to travel to 26 different countries um, before she's like not even 40 years old. <laughs> I was turning 40 in Greece. <laughs> yes, are you serious? Yes. <laughs> that is so bomb. And today we're just talking about, you know, should should parents charge their children rent? I'll say this about my my story. So again, I'm one of five children and my mother never actually said you got to pay rent. But I paid a lot of bills. Like from the time I started working as a caddy, I was um 12 years old. I started caddying at this golf course in uh, Flossmoor, Illinois. I did my first caddy job. I made $40 cash. And when I tell y'all I was sold, I was like, I am rich up in here. Like, yes, 40 bucks at 12 years old with no, no taxes, no nothing. So it was just wonderful. And from that point, so we're talking 12 years old, from that point up until I was high school, college, I was, I was giving money to my family. My very first internship I got when I was in Georgia, um, I got paid a stipend at the end of like six weeks. It was $750. Do you know my mother took the whole check and used it to pay rent? And she didn't even tell me. So I'm checking the mail, looking for this check. Like, man, where's my stipend? And I need this $750. I was 16 oh, years no. old. And she took it to pay rent. So I'm not mad at my mother for doing that. I was mad at the time. Like, I was just like, this is some bullshit and you should have mentioned it to me. I'm not mad at her, but it, it does lend a lot of weight to your point, Elaine, about how people are unprepared and, and as a result, our children are unprepared. So she took my money and I think she didn't say anything because she was too embarrassed and too ashamed. Because I think if she had it her way, she would not have needed that money for me. But the fact remains, if she didn't have that money for me, we were going to be evicted. Yeah. That's the reality of it. And again, I'm not mad at her, but I do realize that my mother made a lot of bad choices, which resulted in the lifestyle that I that I had. 
last thing I want to talk, well, one of the last things I want to talk about, Elaine, remember that, that quiz that we did, the, um, yes, I the traumatic childhood indicator mm -hmm. quiz or something. I forget the name of it because my I name, forget the exact name of it. It's failing me and I'm getting old. So bear with me. <laughs> but if you Google it, um, it's basically 10 questions to ask how traumatic was your childhood? And mine was a nine out of 10. Elaine, what was your score? Zero. <laughs> zero. I was like, man. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Do you think that's a result of staying as home at home as long as you did? You know what, Danielle, to be honest with you, I think it was a direct result of um, I grew up in a two parent home and I grew up in, and I want to clarify that I grew up in a functional two parent home. Because a lot of get offended people unnecessary without <laughs> people get so mad when I mention the importance of two parents' homes and they immediately go to well, just because a parent is just because both parents in house don't mean it, you know, sometimes it's better for we're talking about a functional, I specified functional yes. two parent home. So if, if if a child is in an environment where both they're living with both their biological parents. And they're seeing both their biological parents work together as a team. Then you, I'm I'm observing this, <laughs> like I'm observing a healthy relationship between a man and a woman. And this is this is like being programmed into my mind. You know, I, I've seen my parents argue with each other. I've seen them make up with each other. I've seen them apologize to each other, and I've seen them like cut people off because. Somebody didn't like, somebody liked one, but didn't like the other one. And they wasn't having it. They was like, no, we are, we are the same person. So if, if, he, if he not invited to the party, I'm not coming. And don't even invite us nowhere else if he's not welcome. And vice versa. Like, it, it didn't matter if it was family. It didn't matter if it was friends that, you know, they loaned to, oh, that's my frat brother. That's my soror, you know. I ain't I ain't finna cut her relationship off uh, for somebody that might not even be here next year. That's what they say. But it's like they have a people nowadays have a loyalty to their friends that they don't have to their significant other. But they're all saying, "I want to marry my best friend." How when your best friend is your ship or your soror from college? Marry her then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best friend. <laughs> so you're saying that you think the two parent household thing is is a big part of why you've been able to have a and, and people have normalized it not being a big factor, but it is a big factor. And I want to specify again a functional two parent household because <laughs> you can't just say two parent household because people go jump right to dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. They will. I do think that people, have, we have collectively normalized dysfunction. We've normalized the idea of single parent households or households led by black women. Um, mm -hmm. And shit, I wish I knew what the solution was, but honey, I don't, <laughs> not today. I don't know what the solution is, but I do know that I've seen the after effects of it. Um, but, and I've experienced after effects of it as well, because again, mm -hmm. going back to my mom, there's five of us and Mother was smart, brilliant, loved to read. Like she just was the biggest um, academic ever. And she had a scholarship to go to college. She got pregnant with my sister in high school. And then she decided, of course, she wasn't gonna go to college. So um, that dream kind of went away. And then there was like this six year gap and then it was four of the kids like back to back to back. So I'm 39, my brothers are, I have twin brothers, 39 set of twins 37 and the last one is 35 or 36 I can't remember because again my memory is failing me but we're all very close together and when that happened she had a choice to make and that choice was do I a um stay at home and quote unquote be a welfare queen and collect welfare and just be a stereotype or do I go to work and try to she wanted to prove everybody wrong well my mom went to work and she worked 16 hour shifts um, you know, back to back to back to back to back. Because of course, we're talking in the 80s. So minimum wage was what, five something an hour, $6 an hour? It was 
like $4 or something. Maybe so, and she was a CNA. You know, CNAs have never made shit from back in the 80s or today. They never make, they, I think right now you might make $9, $10 an hour as a CNA. And so she she opted to work. But in her working, she left five children at home to basically raise themselves. So my sister became the, the default parent. And of course, that shit didn't work because my sister um, was only six years older and she didn't want to be bothered with four unruly <laughs> children. And plus, it wasn't her job. And to your point, mm-hmm. like, you get so offended when we say things like, this is not your child's job to raise your children. Well, it ain't your child's job to raise your children. Now, if circumstances dictate that and you can't get out of it, that's one thing. But let's not act like that's ideal. It's not because to this day, my sister still don't want to really mess with us. She she's still traumatized. She like that was some bullshit, and um, right, I didn't appreciate it, and it, it was a lot for her. She missed out on a lot of things because of us. Well, no, because of my mother's decisions that she made um, with her life. So yeah, that's not ideal. So let's stop acting like that's that's what's up. It's and, not. And you know what, Danielle? You mentioned in that you said your mother worked sixteen hours shifts. Yes. And that's shifting back to the um, advantage of a two-parent home because that way all of that isn't on one person. Because I, I watched my parents, uh, my mom worked days and my dad worked nights. So somebody was all, an adult was always at home with us. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it works if you have two people that's put in the children's best interest at heart. Yeah. And then you can have one person that wants to put the children's best into their heart, but then somebody is being selfish. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it- nobody has your children's best interests at heart more so than the parents that's just the reality of it no mm-hmm. grandparent no cousin no no best friend um that's the reality of it and that's another thing yeah. that people a lot of us are triggered by is when we start talking about things like child care and daycare and the necessity of it well we know that it's ne- it's necessary but just so we're clear it's still not ideal to have um basically strangers raising your children and again i know that sounds offensive i mean i i had to do i actually i i I didn't have to do it but i thought about it and i i know it's stressful i know that you have you need to go to work and you have things to do but i promise you nobody's gonna look after your children the way that you will it's kind of like that example of i give my children because they're my eight-year-old asked me to go to a damn sleepover and I couldn't believe it uh first of all you're not going to nobody's sleepover ever number one number two if the house catches on fire boo they not coming to get you first that's just the reality of they're going to save their own children and you're gonna have to figure it out you guys if you're just tuning in I'm your host Danielle Pierce coming to you on fly um Finding Big Queen, Your Black World. You can catch me every Tuesday and Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're talking about should parents charge their children rent? I want to know what you guys think. I know some of y'all are probably going in in the comments. We're going to get back to y'all later and see what y'all talking about and see what y'all got to say. Um, and Elaine is, is very clear that she is the recipient of living in her parents' household until she was 32, not paying rent. And it helped her save money, get great credit, uh, graduate from college with no issues, and not have a traumatic childhood. So it's not like a lot of us think that kids gonna be spoiled if we don't teach them. If we don't get them to pay, you know, a hundred dollars every week, they gonna be spoiled. Elaine, what do you think about that? Are you spoiled? That's a yes and no. <laughs> my my thing is, I'm gonna say yes, I'm spoiled, but I'm a reciprocator. I reciprocate. Okay. So it's okay. <laughs> I, I reciprocate. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. You said you don't want children. And tell me the age when you realized that you didn't want children. I was 10. Do you think that's because of watching your siblings struggle with their children, having them so young? That's part of the reason. And another part of the reason was once I found out where babies came from, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I'm like, that looks like that. And I don't want to do it. And I haven't done it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> that looks like that sucks. Uh, yes, yeah, sucks is an understatement. It, oh, it, it, it is. I um, imagine. Yeah, it, it, it's quite traumatic. And of course, the aftermath, you know, everybody's like, oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It is. However, getting there. It is quite um, traumatic. Unless you're one of those women who'd be like, 
I never had pain during childbirth. Like I, if you one of those women, I'm mad and I'm, and I'm jealous and I'm hating on you. Cause I can't relate to that. Right. Um, but if you were to have children or ever take on like any of your nieces or, or nephews, would you have them stay with you and not pay rent? I think I will. I'm actually, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I'm such an advocate for entrepreneurship and, you know, for not settling for a job. And, and you know, in our community, we tend to think we made it if we're making $76,000 at Comcast. So, uh, but like you said, how many hours do you have to put in um, and be away from your family in order to make that type of income? So yeah, tell you me about your background and tell me about your college degree, the, the job you had and your transition to full-time entrepreneurship, because that story is always fascinating to me. All right. So I, I got a late start with college. I was one of those people who hated school. Um, I got D's and F's in high school. I graduated with a 1.6 GPA. <laughs> I didn't know that now. <laughs> I don't know how I graduated and I don't know even more, I don't know how I got accepted into college. <laughs> I never knew that part of the story, but go ahead. ACT score, it was a 17. So, <laughs> girl. But, but I've always made good decisions, though. And it, and it came from being around people who was doing better than I was. So, I, I made the decision to go to Chicago State University. I graduated debt free. Um, I graduated at the age of, I was just about to turn 23, and I graduated with a, a bachelor's in biology, minor in chemistry. Um, I worked part-time at Walgreens as a pharmacy technician while I was in college. And um, a year later after I graduated, then I got hired with the Illinois State Police as a forensic scientist. Now, I worked there for 10 years. I worked there for 10 years, and then I was able <laughs> to, what, should I say the magic word, Danielle? Yes, you should say it. <laughs> I joined the MLM. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up joining an MLM company, and um, I was at my job for like five years, and within three and a half years, I was able to walk away from it. So that was a total of two years. I don't think they heard you. So let me hit, let me, um, let me, let me paraphrase. <laughs> so you have a degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. Yes. You work for the Illinois State Police where yes. you, um, uh, we, we, that's a whole other live stream about your experience there. So we're going to cover that another day, but you ended up transitioning and you start, you started working for an uh, MLM, multi-level marketing company. Yeah. And you ended up after three and a half years, you were able to leave your job as a forensic scientist. That's correct. Girl, I knew you were smart. When that first time I read that, I'm, I was like, yeah, Elaine is. Um, and let me be clear. So MLMs, of course, get a bad rap and they, you know, everybody's like, there's a, it's a scam. Is this, is that and the third? Just so we're clear. I have certain issues with MLMs, but I under no circumstances think that it's a scam. Number one, it's definitely not a scam. Um, if you, I will say this, Elaine, I've told you this before. If you can make it at a most level marketing company, you can make it anywhere. You could do any business anywhere because MLMs basically bring out all the insecurities that you have about yourself. They bring out all the areas where you're weak. A lot of us are weak in hearing the word no. We don't like to hear the word no. We're offended. Our feelings are hurt. We're like, oh, I got to make, I got a cold call. I got to listen, talk to people and have them hang up on me and curse me out. Yeah, you do. Because if you can do that, all of the other shit is like, it's going to be water under the bridge. Would you say that's been your experience? That's, been, that's definitely been my experience. And some of the responses that I've gotten from people have just been flat out hilarious. So I think it's funny. Oh. <laughs> I think the, the stuff where that turns people off from multi-level marketing, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> What's the number one, um, the number one response that you've gotten? Is it, is it about not having money? You know what? The number one or the most ridiculous? Give me both of them. Okay. <laughs> Give me I, both of them. We got time today. One, the number one issue people have is the monthly overhead, which is only a hundred dollars. So my actual issue with that is, is and, and of course, people just say that as a polite way to say no. For some reason, 
adults don't like telling other adults no. <laughs> so I'm very adamant about it, using the word no if I don't want to do something. I'm not going to make it seem like I need to think about it. I'm just going to say no. And, and the answer is no because I'm going to be sitting on my couch drinking wine. It's not even a real reason. So... <laughs> Okay, and what's the most ridiculous? The most ridiculous is let me talk to my pastor first because I have to pray on it. That was, that was one of the most ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me um, let me let me process that for a minute. So let me talk to my past first. I got to pray on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're not here to throw anybody's religion under the bus. So for y'all, y'all start in the comments. Um. <laughs> I just will say this. I think that if you are an adult and a hundred dollars a month is um, something that is absolutely out of your range, I think that a lot of things need to be reevaluated. I'll That's say it. that. A lot of things need to be be reevaluated. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, uh, before we wrap up again, I'm your host, Danielle Pierce, coming to you on Your Black World today. Normally I'm on Friday being queen every Tuesday and Thursday, 11 o'clock Eastern. You guys hit the thumbs up button if you have not already. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you very much. We appreciate you guys for doing that. Be sure to text Queens to 31996 to be notified when we go live. And of course, we are still looking for new panelists. So if you want to be here on YouTube or on Facebook, send us an email to producer at flynubianmedia.com. You can find out more about my platform at economicelevation.com. And Elaine, where, what's your YouTube channel? It's EPH Lifestyle. Let okay. me double check and make sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the name of it. I was just on there last night. And so, Elaine, just so we're clear, you are um, the recipient of, you know, you stayed at your parents' house rent-free until you were 32. Yes. No children. No children. A uh, couple engagements, but haven't been married. Yes. <laughs> Great credit, which I know personally. Great credit score. Um, and you are a multi-level marketing professional and yes. you've been able to leave your six figure job as a forensic scientist to do multi-level marketing. Yes. And you don't believe that children should, uh, pay rent to their parents. And as a matter of fact, you think it's detrimental if, if they do so. Mm -hmm. All of the above is correct. Okay. <laughs> the channel is EPH Lifestyle Inc. <laughs> lifestyle Inc. And what would you tell if you had a chance to talk to some uh if you had a chance to talk to the people and and you know we'll say sing, people who have children, small children, and they're working every day. And what would you tell them as far as you know any advice or a way out or any feedback? What would you say to them? Um I would say to them to really think about how, especially if, if you have small children, it's amazing some of the things that I remember from like when I was six and seven years old. And your, your children's memories form earlier than you think. And even my niece, she's eight. She's brought stuff back up to me that I've told her when she was like four. Yeah. She remembers it. So just be aware of the fact that your children are watching you. And, uh, and it may be the slightest thing that sticks in their head. And is that going to be something that they can grow up with and feel empowered by? Or is that something that they're going to use to self-sabotage themselves with when they become adults or as they, you know, become adults? So I'm, I'm very conscious about the things I say to my niece. And I'll ask her stuff. I'll, I'll flat out ask her questions like, are you proud of yourself? You know, I'll, I'll ask her, you know, how do you feel about yourself at school? You know, I want to know what her thought process is about herself and around her peers. I want to know if anybody is bullying, bullying her or making her feel uncomfortable. And yeah. I basically want to make sure that she knows that she is the shit <laughs> and that she is protected and that she is loved. Yes. So, and, and, and that's one of the main reasons why I'm like this obnoxious person for a lot of people on Facebook is because my dad instilled that in me. And, um, you know, I remember from as far back as I can remember, it's like at the age of three, 
all the way up to now, Danielle. My dad told me every single day that I was very important and special to him wow. because he made me. Wow. He told me that every single day growing up. So if, if I went out and got bullied at school, I didn't come home and hang myself in the closet. So I'm like, this, this is huge. I'm like, just words of affirmation from an opposite sex parent too. Yeah, I just wonder what that would look like for every woman to have experienced that mm -hmm. as a child. I think that that would change things pretty much overnight. Between today and tomorrow, it'd be a whole different, it'll be a 180. Um, and going back to your point about memories, um, I always say that children are always learning what, and whether or not we're teaching. Um, it's literally like living with, it's li it's like living under a microscope. And those of you who have children, you know that this to, this to be true. They don't miss anything. I could change my eyeshadow color and they'll be like, mommy, you had on pink the other day and now it's orange. Why did you do that, mommy? <laughs> I could um, change my, my toenail polish and here they come, you know, with the questions. Like they always are watching. And I remember, so my earliest memory, uh, unfortunately, is my dad hitting my mom. And I was two when this happened. And I went in the closet and I remember screaming and screaming and screaming like so loud. I had my favorite robe on that I love to have on. And I was holding this teddy bear. And my sister came in the closet and got me. And then the police knocked on the door and they took my dad to jail. That was my very earliest memory. Oh, and no. I can go on and on about all the things that um, that, that taught me and, and other, the other things that I've learned. But trust and believe it wasn't like it wasn't positive. And again, my mother never said, Danielle, you should let men hit you. Danielle, you should, um, you know, have men yelling at you and, and talking crazy. She never said that to me, but she said it to me with her actions. And so that's what the point that I'm making and Elaine is making as well is that they are always watching and you don't have to be specifically giving them a lesson, but they see everything like they see shit that <laughs> it's like, like I said, it's like living under a mm -hmm. microscope. Elaine, tell the people where to find your uh, YouTube channel again before we leave. It's EPH Lifestyle Inc. EPH Lifestyle Inc. And you're going to be talking about traveling the world. Incorporated. <laughs> traveling the world, going to 26 different countries, um, not being unapologetic. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and anything else that you're going to be talking about on the channel? Um, I'm going to start talking about um, health and beauty products. You know, I do use my degree as a chemist still, so I do mix stuff up in the kitchen. I recently started using um, mushed up potato ice cubes and aloe vera and sea moss on my face. Then, yeah, when I tell you this mixture closed up my pores, okay, I'm like... <laughs> I it cannot take you. My fork and it is fading my hyperpigmentation. Really? So I'm excited about it. Girl, I get you the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we had this conversation today. You guys, again, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, I again I, I'm not a proponent of charging children rent, I'm not a proponent of, of a proponent of making them uh, adults before they're ready. And just so we're clear, you know, because some, sometimes I don't like to take a specific stance, but for this one, I will, because I do have children. There's nothing magical about turning 18 or 21. And those of you who know 18 and 21 year olds, they still do the same dumb shit that they've been doing. You know, they're prone to doing dumb shit, I should say, because they're biologically, there's a part of the brain that doesn't fully develop until you're what, is it 25 or 23? And it has to do with reasoning. And at 18 and 21 year old, that's, they're not grown. They're not adults and charging them rent is not, there's other ways to make your children be properly prepared adults besides charging rent. We act like to think that charging rent is the only way and it's absolutely is not. All right. Text Queens to 31996 to be notified when we go live. Uh, be sure to come back and check me out on Thursday. I'm going to be talking about, I don't know what I'm be talking about yet, but it's going to be good. <laughs> Probably something to do with tax lien properties again. Find my website at economicelevation.com. Uh, what else? Oh, listen to iTunes on, listen to the Finding Me and Queen podcast on the go. We're on iTunes. And I think that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you for having me, Miss Danielle. Yeah. Thank you. And follow again uh, Elaine's uh, YouTube channel. It's EPH Lifestyle Incorporated. All right. So I'll see you guys on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Sending you love, light. Peace, blessings, grace, and clarity. Until next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.